Welcome back. In this movie, what I'm going to talk about is Ajax concepts. Now, Ajax uh, is probably a buzzword that you've heard uh, being thrown around lately, and uh, <coughs> it originated back in about 2005. And the word originally kind of got some criticism because it was simply putting kind of a branded name on something that existed previously. And uh, there's really nothing that revolutionary about it. But what is important about it is, is you know, coining the term Ajax uh, really put kind of a wrapper around it uh, that conceptually. Let me explain what this is. Ajax simply stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. Okay? Now, <clears throat> the old way of doing things in the early days of HTML is you had to load a new page every time you wanted to see content. And what Ajax allows you to do is to use JavaScript and XML kind of simultaneously and the effect is, is that you're able to create interactive content that's more like a web application, okay, which runs more like a desktop application, like uh, something like, um, oh, for instance, if you uh, use Word or if you use Photoshop or, or a lot of the Mac apps like uh, iPhoto or anything like that. Um, and so I'm going to give you some examples here and kind of talk you through some things so you can see exactly what we're talking about here. Okay, now the example that I pulled up right now that actually runs very well is on Apple's homepage. And this is uh, just kind of a section that they've added recently uh, with the new MacBooks. But you'll notice if you go through Apple's site that you're going to see a lot of this type of, uh, this type of stuff. It's very simple, but it's very effective. Um, what you can see here is we're under this section for the new MacBook here. And we have an image that's up right here. You can see that it's an image of the MacBook with some text. And below that, there's a series of thumbnails. Now, if I click on any of these thumbnails, they basically dynamically load a new image into the page. And there's a little bit of a fade on there, too. So you can see the image fade in. It's just a nice effect. It's very smooth. These images are big. It's a really nice effect on the website. And another thing that they've added here, if you go back to the first image, is there's a little uh, a widget up here that says, the new MacBook, watch the video. And if I click on that, you're going to see that it adds a um, a video into that screen as well. Now it's doing all of this without loading a new web page. It's simply loading each one of these one by one into the existing HTML page. If I hit the back button on my browser, it's going to actually take me back uh, to the previous page I'm on, not through the images. So this is uh, acting more like an application in this sense. Uh, you can see the videos running here. And if I click the close button, it takes the video away and goes back to the image. So it's loading all this within one web page, which, which is very efficient. You don't have to wait for extra HTML to load. It doesn't hang on the browser. Um, it's just very smooth. It all kind of just loads nicely into the interface and is user controlled. Now this adds <clears throat> not so much XML as it does simply using JavaScript to dynamically load things into the page. Now the XML model comes in when you're loading data. Uh, so if I'm loading, you can think of it kind of like a spreadsheet. If I, you know, for instance, I don't think you guys uh, can see, um, well, here, here's a good example. Like, uh, for instance, if you're using Gmail or Hotmail or any of those clients, a lot of those are heavy, heavily Ajax programmed now. So you can actually go in and when you're checking your email, it feels more like your desktop email application. Uh, so without reloading a page, it just dynamically loads sections, which is great for an email application, things like that. Let me show you a, a more advanced application of this. If you use uh, Flickr ever, let's go to Flickr's website. Now, Flickr is very well programmed. It's pretty much straight up um, XHTML, CSS kinds of stuff. But if you go to the top, if you have a Flickr account and you go to the Organize section, and this is one of the, uh, uh, one of the more complex but very well um, implemented uses of Ajax that I've seen. But anyway, what it does is it acts, uh, this is the organizer, and what it does is it allows you to, uh, I mean, this really feels like Photoshop or even Bridge or something like that. Um, if you'll see down here at the bottom, it loads, these are all my images that I've loaded onto Flickr recently, and it allows me to edit these images uh, in a batch without having to do them one by one. And let me show you a couple things. Right at the top here, you have batch organize, you have sets and collections, so I can sort that. I can add my photos to groups, and I can even use the mapping function, which is really cool. If I want to put um, uh, metadata in here, global geotags of latitude and longitude, it's implemented in here with actually Yahoo Maps, but it uh, does a really nice job of that. So anyway, again, it's like a button-style interface that you'd see in a desktop application. Uh, and it feels less like a web page. So what I really like about this too at the bottom, here's all of my content. I can search by keyword. So if I just want to look for all my images of still life, so I can type in still life. Now I have previously tagged these images, but it's going to load still life images 
that I have tagged with those particular keywords. Also, it dynamically loads them in in a scrolling fashion down here if I click the right arrow, which is really nice because all of a sudden I'm not loading HTML pages. And, and what happens here is the user experience is it's smoother, it's less frustrating, and like I said, it feels like a, a desktop application. And this adds a lot of power to uh, what you're trying to do um, in an internet type setting. Um, and I can take some of these images and if I hold down the shift key on my keyboard I can select multiple images and you can see they get a pink border and they kind of rise slightly up. And I can simply drag, click and drag those page, uh, these images onto the main stage here. And I can do as many as I want. And if I want to uh, perform an action on these I can edit photos. If you click on this you'll get a drop down menu. I can rotate them all. I can delete them. I can add titles, tags, and descriptions. I can reset permissions of who gets to see these. I can change the licensing. Do I want this to be Creative Commons or do I want it to be copyrighted? Uh, I can edit the dates on these. Um, it's going to load an interface to do this. Anyway, I can uh, change the date taken to another date if I want. Let's cancel that out. Uh, I can add to a set if I want. I can, yeah, and obviously the default is to create a new set with these images. Anyway, this adds a lot of power to, um, to the user, to what you're able to do on here. So anyway, so these are just some examples of Ajax, and I hope you uh, kind of understand, just at least from a conceptual level, what's going on here. Within one HTML page, you're able to dynamically um, load in new content or you know communicate with the server all that without leaving the web page and that's where asynchronous JavaScript and XML come in come into play um, basically asynchronous meaning they're both running at the same time uh, we're gonna go on in the next movie here and discuss uh, JavaScript frameworks and look at some things like that so stay tuned and we'll go on there